Hello all, welcome to the Power Belt Garage. Today we're going to be showing you how to bleed your jack and do some basic maintenance on it. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want, want to locate our fill valve and bleed valve, which is the same. So on this particular model we have a tool tray. We're going to go ahead and remove the four screws from the tool tray and set that aside. Real simple, we're not going to be using too many tools today. We're going to use a number two screwdriver to first remove the tool tray. We're also going to use a number three screwdriver, Phillips, to go ahead and remove the uh, valve. Once we remove the valve, we'll check the fill level of the fluid. Once the fill level is checked, we can go ahead and see how, about how much bleeding the, the jack may need. Now sometimes people may not believe that the jack needs to be bled. It may function just fine. But there are occasions where the jack can perform much better when it is bled. During shipping processes, transportation, or just over a period of time of having the jack and utilizing it, they do become filled with air. There is, there is opportunity for air to get in on any model, any make, any brand. So, for this model, we'll go ahead and remove the tool tray and set it aside. With our tool tray removed, we can easily see where our fill and bleed valve is located. Keep in mind when servicing your jack, filling, or bleeding it, do not adjust the safety valves. Safety valves are located here and here, and your bleed fill valve is located here. To check the fill level of the, we'll take a number three Phillips screwdriver, open it up, and check the fill level. Our fill level should be even with the piston that pushes forward to lift and lower the jack. Jack oils are available with and without stop leak. This particular model and brand we got with the stop leak. So we can take open this up and begin to fill the jack. Not much fluid was required for this one. So now that we're at the proper level of fluid, we can go ahead and take our number three Phillips screwdriver and our fill bleed plug, tighten it back up, secure our jack in the upright position, and begin to pump it up. We're going to go ahead and pump it up all the way to maximum height may take me a minute, I'm on a table, so I don't have full access to pump it all up. But once we're all the way up, we'll take and crack the fill valve. You'll hear a little bit of air come out, that is normal. At that point, we'll go ahead and lower the jack, and it will continue to push the air out of it. Once the jack is completely lowered and all the air has been removed, We'll go ahead and retighten the fill valve. You can assist the jack by going down by just putting a little pressure on it if you feel the need or you want to just make it a little quicker. Now that it's all the way down, go ahead and tighten that. Run this again. Crack the valve open and loosen it one more time. Once lowered, tighten the valve. And now you can recheck the fluid. Fluid level on this one seems to be right on point. So now we'll go ahead and tighten the valve back up. And the bleeding of the jack is complete. So with our bleeding complete, we can go ahead and reassemble the jack by reinstalling the tool tray. Tool tray should fit nice and snug, so we'll go ahead and give it a couple little taps. 
Now that we've aligned our tool tray, we can go ahead and reinstall the four Phillips head screwdrivers with our number two screw. With our tool tray reassembled, our fluid level checked, and the jack completely bled, we're fully ready for use and service on any vehicle now.